Obesity, diabetes, cancer, asthma, depression, anxiety, digestive issues, autoimmune disease, acne. What do these all have in common? They are all started by inflammation on the cellular level. And growing research is showing that this is heavily affected by our gut health. Trillions of bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses are living on you and inside of you, red free. For some reason we were taught that germs were bad, but the reality of it is, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for bacteria and these other microorganisms. 90% of the cells in our body are either bacteria or microbial cells, which means only 10% of our cells are actually human cells. We are literally controlled by bacteria. The more you understand about the microbiome, the more you start understanding how the human body works and the more you start to question some of the practices that we use in modern medicine. The microbiome is responsible for up to 60% of our immune system function and 90% of serotonin production. Serotonin is that feel good mood balancing chemical. There is a direct connection between our brain and our gut via the vagus nerve, which runs from our brain to our gut. Through these connections, your brain can communicate stress and anxiety to your gut, which could cause disruption within your microbiome. So basically your mood can influence your gut function and your gut function can influence your mood. If your gut isn't happy though, it creates inflammation. More and more research is showing that inflammation is the root cause of almost all disease. This inflammation can lead to a breaking down of your gut line allowing the bad bacteria to seep into your bloodstream. This is known as leaky gut. Mmm, leaky gut. The good news is, if your gut is healthy, it can lead to a better mood, more energy, mental clarity, clearer skin, better digestion, stronger immune system, and a better quality of life. Microbiome health depends on a few different factors, ranging from the environment in which you live, medications like antibiotics, whether or not that you had a C-section when you were born, the amount of exercise you get, and most importantly, the food that you eat. Research has shown that just six weeks of exercise can produce a positive change in your gut microbiome. You can increase bacteria diversity simply by eating good foods that contain polyphenols, which are antioxidant compounds that you're gonna find in coffee, dark chocolate, red wine, and tea, as well as your dietary fiber from your fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Make sure they're organic though and not sprayed with pesticides. Also, fermented foods such as your kombucha contain probiotic bacteria, which is great for gut health. Just because you're drinking kombucha doesn't mean that you could go eat fast food right after. If you ask me, staying away from processed food is probably the best way to improve gut health and the gut health of others. Because if you're not supporting processed food companies, you're not supporting crops that are highly sprayed with pesticides, Pesticides are meant to kill bacteria. The same reason that they are so useful for farmers are the same reason that they're so toxic to us. So if you want your bacteria to cooperate with you, my first advice would be get outside. Eat real food. Stay away from conventionally farmed processed foods. They contain pesticides, which are harmful to gut bacteria. That's the main reason why I preach against this stuff. It all comes back to the cellular health. If our cells aren't happy, you're not happy. You can literally be living a better life simply by eating better, simply by getting outside and moving a little bit more. Take your dog for an extra walk or two, and don't be afraid to pick up those poops.